Chairman, and thank you, Senator Boxer, for holding this hearing today, and thanks to all the witnesses for coming. The Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality shares in the concerns that have been expressed by many of the witnesses today. In the letter addressed to the committee, our state has written that, quote, while Nebraska has a good working relationship with EPA Region 7, re recent EPA headquarters regulatory actions have snowballed. EPA's compulsive tinkering with standards and limits, often before states have had a reasonable chance to comply, make it difficult to reconcile those often competing priorities, unquote. Secretary Perner, in your response letter that was sent to the committee, you state that nearly all new federal requirements will have an impact on your state, its citizens, and its economy but will, quote, produce little or no benefits in protecting public health and the environment. Like my home state of Nebraska, South Dakota is a rural state that hosts many unique and critical natural resources that benefit citizens and communities. Can you please elaborate on the challenges many rural communities will face as a result of expansive EPA regulations and what are the economic impacts in terms of job growth and industry investment from the EPA rules? Uh, Senator, I, th I think, you know, part of my concern is that, like, on the water quality and effluent standards that I talked about in my testimony, it's not that we're against having minimum standards. But now we're ratcheting those standards down to such a degree as to be almost infeasible in some cases. You know, I'll just talk about the ammonia standard. We were one of the first states to include ammonia as a water quality standard. Ammonia can be toxic to fish. And so we, we agreed with that, and we agreed that our, all of our large cities pretty much have what was called tertiary treatment that treat for ammonia and have for many years now. But if we ratchet that level down, now we're going to have to install even more treatment. And can we, you know, basically the new standard is based not on fish anymore, it's based on mussels. And so I'm going, well, then how did the mussels do it when we didn't treat for any ammonia? And I, again, I'm not a biologist and I don't understand all that, but all I do understand is that the levels are getting down to such a point as to be cost prohibitive. And that concerns me because if we do try to comply with those new standards, we're going to be spending a lot of time and a lot of money that could be spent in other areas. Right. Nebraska, the Department of Environmental Quality, they discuss the need for streamlining those federal requirements. We're always uh, worried about that unnecessary uh, duplication. So, Mr. Perner, do you agree with that statement? In your experience, um, do you see duplication reoccurring as a reoccurring theme um, among state regulators as they try to interpret and then try to implement all these federal mandates? Senator, I'm not exactly sure I understand the question. You mean a duplication between the state and EPA? In many cases, yes, but also between federal agencies. So it's not just EPA that comes down with standards, but you have other agencies as well. Well, we certainly have other federal issues with the Corps of Engineers, with the uh, Bureau of Land Management, with uh, Forest Service. So, I mean, it, there's many, many other federal agencies that we believe are infringing on states' rights besides EPA, if that's the answer. How much, how much time does that add uh, when you're trying to meet regulations, when you have different agencies out there that, um, that are, I would say they're piling on, on a number of the regulations that we look at? Senator, it's certainly of concern. I, I'll give you an example. In our department, we're a relatively small department, our clean air program, I think has 14 FTE in it for the whole state. When the clean power plan came out, we took two of those people and they have been, wor they worked when it first came out and we were trying to do comments and trying to figure out what was going on and then when the 
the, the final rule came out, we had to go through that process all over again. Basically, we process, I'm gonna say somewhere around 80 air quality permits mm -hmm. per month that are renewals and new and so on. You know, I had to take two, F, two out of the 14 FTE out of that process to devote to just right. the clean air plant. In your testimony, you talk about the EPA's rule to regulate coal ash, and, and you note that the new rule will preempt the existing solid waste permit that's currently administered in your state. Uh, it's my understanding the EPA is encouraging states to amend their solid state, uh, their state solid waste uh, management plans. Are, are you um, concerned about the timing for that? Yes, Senator, very much so. Again, we believe our existing solid waste permit was adequately protecting the environment. Now there's a, a, a host of new requirements that somehow we have to merge in with that existing permit, and we have to try to figure out how to do that in the least disruptive manner to both the agency and the industry. Are you limited in your flexibility? I, all I can say at this point is ne our negotiations with Region 8 are ongoing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Senator.